Hello guys, the Amiga Boys here. Since the game has been out now for a very long time and the meta has changed a lot since the game first came out in 2013, I thought that we should take a look back in time and rewatch some of those really iconic builds that have existed throughout the lifespan of the game. Some of these builds' mechanics have now even been fundamentally changed, so they are no longer possible to make. These changes could for example be changes to snapshotting, and item changes that no longer make the builds viable, for example the chaos conversion and poison changes etc. Therefore I thought that we should take a look back at these clips and feel some of that good old nostalgia again. I do of course not own any of these clips so all credit will of course go to the original owners of the clips and the YouTube videos. I have probably forgot a lot of the noteworthy builds throughout the Path of Exile history so I do by no means think that these are the most iconic builds out there. I just wanted to show new players and old players alike some of those good old builds that most people probably had forgot about by now. If I get positive response on these videos, I'll happily continue to make more of them and if you have any suggestions to top 5s or top 10s PoE related, let me know down in the description. I spent a very long time editing this video and looking for just the right clips, so I hope you guys really enjoy it. But no more talk, let's get into the video. Righteous Fire is a build that has been in the game for a very very long time. The build was featured in Build of the Week Season 1 Episode 11 back in 2012, but it wasn't really popular until the famous expansion Sacrifice of the Wild that introduced the iconic Ciri fight released in 2014. In this expansion, that was when RF really started to shine. The YouTuber Colby Cheese made a video guide about it titled The Most OP solo build in Path of Exile. That build guide did really really well and managed to be one of the most viewed Path of Exile build guides ever on YouTube, with more than 770k views right behind Ziggy's Spark Scion. And on top of that, DS Farbla Garwagel, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, <laughs> he managed to be the first guy ever to kill Ubred Siri on the Ambush Softcore League, which made him really really famous and also made the build really really famous as a boss killer which is still really popular to this day today as a lab farmer etc. Incinerate is one of those builds that you don't really see people running around with today but back then this build was insane. The fact that shotgunning was a thing and the projectiles could hit the same target meant that this thing was a really OP boss killer. Paired with Max Block and Sybil's Paw, you were unstoppable and nothing could really kill you. The streamer RaceQT made a special version of Incinerate that not only used RF for more damage but also due to the high fire resistance from the Phoenix Shield was pretty reflect proof and therefore a good hardcore option. The build got really popular and he even managed to make a lot of currency by farming at Siri on Hardcore. The Incinerate meta later turned into 100% chaos conversion once people realized that poison was really OP. Consuming Dark that back in the day gave you 75% chaos conversion along with Infernal Mandel made you able to convert 100% of your fire damage to chaos making you reflect proof and giving you a ton of double dipping projectile poison damage. Lightning Arrow is a skill you still see being used a lot today. However, back in the day when it worked with Frostwall, things were really, really, really OP. The fact that Frostwall consisted of something like 50 chainable targets close together made Lightning Arrow insanely broken for single target, which later led to the nerf of Frostwall and led to the downfall of Explosive Arrow as the arrows couldn't hang onto the wall anymore. Maffles with Toxic Lightning Arrow build was a very good example of how broken this thing really was. Instantly killing the Ubuid Siri faces was definitely not a common thing back then. Pairing Lightning Arrow with Viltaxic, which back then had 100% chaos conversion, meant that Reflect was no problem and meant the build hardcore viable as well. The video you see here behind me is actually damaged on a 5 link, so you really get the idea of how OP this was. If you counter in that, you could even use a 6 link for even more damage.
Custom Crit Discharge, also known as Fakenir, was a build that essentially started out as a cheaper version of the Mjolnir Discharge, a build I'll talk about later in this video. The build was really cheap to get started and had insane endgame potential due to the insane scaling Discharge had with expensive items such as Vol's Devotion, etc. The build got really popular by the well-known streamer Mathil and was first used solely on Cyclone. However, as Castle and Crit got a major nerf in 2.4, with the 0.5 seconds internal cooldown, many people thought that this build was dead. However, that wasn't really the case. When Cosprey introduced his second unique in the same patch, the Cosprey's Malice, people started to realize that this thing was far from dead. Paired with the new shield charge, this build took speed farming to a whole nother level. Players like Cute Dog and Cicerone showed the community how fast this build really was. It could clear maps in seconds. Speaking of cast and crit, cast and crit barrage was one of the most used cast and crit skills back in the day before the 2.4 nerfs to the cooldown. The fact that you could trigger an insane amount of skills every second and the fact that both barrage and your spells benefited from supports like GMP made you able to proc skills a ridiculous amount of times per second. In Build of the Week Season 2 Episode 7 we saw Space Janitor's cast and crit wind tripper build. This build could reach several millions of DPS which was insanely broken back then and only a few other builds like Fimblefro and Rainbow Nuke managed to reach those numbers. But how did he reach those numbers? Well, there's one simple answer. Shotgunning. If you were standing right in front of the mob, all 5 projectiles from each spell would overlap and hit the same target multiplying your damage immensely and insta-killing you with series faces and everything like that. Another popular cast and crit barrage build that used wands instead of bows was the famous Shatter Chuck build created by Tom94. His forum guide was one of the most viewed builds back in the day but has since died out due to the fact that cast and crit barrage isn't really viable anymore. The build used dual wield void batteries for an insane amount of spell damage and crit chains while being low life for maximum damage output. Overall these builds were really powerful and really fun and it's kind of sad that they aren't really viable anymore. You have all probably heard of the term elemental buzzsaw. If you haven't, it's basically just a term for any elemental scaled one-handed spectral throw build. The build really started to see a lot of use during the sacrifice of the Val expansion. Maffle has also made a really popular guide around it that currently has over or around 1.5 million forum views, which is a lot. The build was known for being a cheap leak starter that scaled well into the endgame and the only thing that really was mandatory for the build in order to work was using the Seraph back to throw microtransaction, cause without that it wasn't really a boss or build, but rather just an ordinary spectral throw. The build started out being a non-crit build, but later moved over to crit when people realized how good it actually was, and it's still viable to this day. Ever since Skull's Bridal was released, people have been theory crafting various interactions looking for the best way to abuse this unique. I actually even tried testing it myself back when it first released in Torment League, and to my surprise, the single target interaction with Val Molden Shell was absolutely insane for single target damage. But it wasn't until a few leaks after, with the introduction of the Elementalist in the Ascendancy expansion, that Val Molden Shell builds really got popular. With the Ignite Prolif from Elementalist, you would basically use your movement skill to get around, damaging you at the same time and proccing the explosion on the Val skill. This led to an insanely high clear speed and required no gear at all except for the Skull's Bridal itself. The build was so broken that it allowed Havoc to reach level 100 in just 3 days and it got nerfed the following patch. Blade Vortex is one of those builds you still see kinda being used today but it's nowhere as powerful as it used to be. Back in the day, before Pathfinder and Surgeon's Flask were nerfed and Vinctors had two uses and instant leech during Flask effect, this build was broken. You could literally face hang everything due to the Blade Vortex's hitting up to around 40 times per second, leading to an insane Flask charge generation and survivability with Val Pact that back then also worked on Energy Shield. Many people opted for low life as it had an insane damage output and also had a pretty high ES pool. 
probably the most known Blade Vortex build was Blasting Cap's Lawnmower build. This build was played standard with the most OP mirror tier gear, but also had one of the highest damage outputs in the game at that time. Sadly, I wasn't able to find any footage of the build ever since he got caught viewbotting on his stream and quit PoE and deleted all his videos. His guide is still up, however, so if you're interested, you can look at the forums here. Most of you have probably heard of the term Milner Discharge. Some people even play today, but it's far from what it was back in the day. Back before the weapon had an internal cooldown, before the flask nerfs and before the damage nerf to discharge when triggered, this thing was absurd. Combining all purities and flask nodes made you able to reach resists upwards of 95% making you pretty much immortal. This was one of those dream builds that everyone wanted to play but that no one really could afford. With prices like 80x on shafts, 50x on Mjolnir and 30x on Vol's Devotion, this build was not beginner friendly. Tom94, the guy that also made Shadow Chuck, made a Mjolnir Discharge Guide called Rainbow Nuke that was absolutely disgusting back then. The only downside was the insane cost and the insane lag the build created. Havok also showed the world how tanky this build was when he managed to face tank Abex off on hardcore bloodlines, which was definitely the hardest boss at the time. Bear in mind that this was way back in Bloodlines League and was before all the ascendancy power creep. Before I reveal the 10th and last build in this video, I would like to mention some honorable mentions that also made an impact in Pavex our build history. All of these builds you see here on screen are also very iconic builds from the Pep Exile history. If I get to make a second one of these videos, you might find one of these builds in that video. But now, let's get over to the 10th and last build in this video, the legendary Spork Totems. Last but not least, probably the most nostalgic build out there, the Low Life Spark Totems, also known as the Low Life Sporker. This build was from way back in the day, before the game even released to the public. Back before Act 3 was added to the game, before challenge leagues and back when Val runs was a legit farming strategy. The build was really powerful and was used by many of the top players due to its crazy damage. The streamer and YouTuber Willy Wonka made a great build guide around it, showcasing how powerful it really was. With over 4000 DPS per totem. Yeah, I know right? <laughs> This was able to kill a Val Oversoul almost instantly. Taking advantage of skill nodes such as Elemental Adaptation and Inner Force, he was able to get up to 85% fire resist without flasks, enabling the use of Righteous Fire for even more damage. The build was able to carry multiple party members with the right gear, it was overall just very very powerful. Unique, unique, unique. go go. Okay. Is this the MIPS? Is this MIPS? Oh Lion Eyes! Oh. I got Lion Eyes! Yeah, bitch! Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go, guys. That was all of the 10 builds. I hope you really enjoyed the video, and if you did, and also like my other content, I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel, as I'm kind of getting fucked after this month ends, since the new YouTube policy requires me to get 1k subs in order to get monetized. But you should, of course, only do it if you like my content. Hope you guys had a wonderful day and peace out.